One of the best burgers I've ever had. In my universe, this place closed six years ago. Mm. Whether you're a foodie or not, good food is for everyone. So get ready to add a few things to your bucket list with these 15 foods you need to eat before you die. Part two. Still alive. Dulce de leche. Wow, it can't possibly be good for you because it's way too tasty. This confection from Latin America made from milk and sugar has been around for centuries and was allegedly discovered by accident in Argentina. The best part? It can easily be made at home. To make things as simple as possible, all you need is a can of condensed milk, some patience, and one heck of a sweet tooth. Dulce de leche is typically used as a topping or filling for other sweet desserts like cakes, churros, and even waffles, but it can just as well be eaten by the spoonful. If you want to try the real, authentic caramel-like sauce, however, you might want to head over to a Latin American country and see for yourself just how sweet life can be. Onward! Bubble tea. Uh, help yourself to a, a boba tea. Angela, can you show her the boba? Honestly, it's 2021. If you haven't had bubble tea yet, what are you waiting for? Originally from Taiwan, bubble tea, boba, tapioca tea, whatever you want to call it, has been gaining in popularity all around the world and can now be found practically everywhere. The now full-blown sensation is made with black chewy tapioca balls mixed in with tea and milk and shaken until it creates a thick layer of foam. While today most of the bubble teas available are full of sugar and syrup with crazy flavors, it's not so far off from the real deal. Since it's now become almost as common as coffee and soda, you have no more excuses to pull off your boba initiation. So grab a straw and take a sip. As you wish. Oh, and P.S. Don't forget to chew the bubbles. Kool-Aid pickles. Oh no. Whoever thought of Kool-Aid pickles was either a genius or a, well, not a genius. But for the sake of this list, we're going to go with genius, simply because they are surprisingly tasty and you should definitely try one at least once in your life. As eerie and unappetizing as they sound, Kool-Aid pickles are actually quite popular, especially in the Delta region of Mississippi where they were created. Kulikles are pickles that have been removed from their brine of vinegar and salt and are left to simmer in a jar of Kool-Aid for a week where they pick up their bright hue. Kool-Aid pickles will leave behind a fruity, sweet flavor without losing all of its vinegar and salt. Oh, yeah! You get a crunchy snack that perfectly pairs the three tastes together. Trust us, don't knock it till you've tried it. Poutine. Who wants a poutine? I do. I do. Okay. I want you. It's time to look to our neighbors to the north and give poutine a try. For those unfamiliar with this delicious meal, it's essentially a plate of crispy French fries smothered in thick brown gravy and topped with squeaky cheese curds. Careful now, Canadians are very serious about their poutine, and in order to qualify as such, it has to be curds. Shredded cheese or slices won't cut it. The dish was invented in Quebec, a French-speaking province of Canada back in the 1950s and has been a staple of the province ever since. If you like greasy, savory, and starchy foods, poutine is there to satisfy your cravings. It's served pretty much all over Canada, so you shouldn't have trouble finding it. Add smoked meat and we got a deal. Or better yet, you can always try to make it at home yourself. Wagyu beef. Where's the beef? For all of the meat lovers out there, you all know the one steak you'd want to try before you die. Wagyu beef is said to be some of the finest meat in the world, and it has the price tag to go with it. The beef is made of a specific breed of cows in Japan that eat a very nutrient-rich diet, which is what gives the meat its marbling of fat and distinct and addictive taste. The term Wagyu refers to all Japanese beef cattle, so that includes Matsusaka beef, Yonezawa beef, and the most commonly known Kobe beef. However, no matter which one you get, you're sure to get quality every time. Of course, serving this at a dinner party might be a little much because of its expensive price, but it's definitely a way to treat yourself. Three words for you. Treat. Yo. Sell. Just be warned, uh, once you go for Wagyu, regular steaks will most likely never be enough again. Turducken. New Pepper Jack Turducken Slammer, limited time only. 
are you looking for a way to mix things up a bit for your next Thanksgiving dinner, but you've exhausted every single cranberry sauce recipe? Fear not, the turducken is coming to the rescue. Well, that is, if a giant triple stuffed bird is the direction you really want to take, of course. The turducken has been around since the 1970s, but the bird within a bird shenanigans is nothing new. It consists of a turkey stuffed with a duck that's also been stuffed with a chicken, which is stuffed with stuffing. That's a whole lot of stuffed stuff, that's for sure. Chef Paul Prudhomme claims he was the one who invented this one-of-a-kind, terrifying, festive bird. I guarantee! Will you stop saying that? But despite holding the trademark, many believe he wasn't the true inventor. But regardless of when, where, or who created it, the turducken is sure to bring something different to your dinner table, and a story everyone can talk about for a very long time. Truffles. A truffle is a fungus that grows in tree roots. It's one of the most prized gourmet foods in the world. There are two kinds of truffles, and each is very different. There's the sweet, chocolatey delight and the good old fungus. And while you should absolutely try them both before you kick the bucket, we're here to talk about the latter. Truffles are delicate, luxurious foods that require a lot of work to yield. The process is traditionally done with truffle-sniffing dogs, extremely skilled and scent-driven breeds like the Lagotto Romagnolo and Springer Spaniel, which go on gathering trips to detect the truffles. Before dogs came to the rescue, the hunting was done with pigs. This is mostly why truffles are so expensive and why the closest most people will ever get to taste them is via truffle oil. They're also pretty hard to keep fresh during transport, so if you truly want to experience the real thing, a little trip would go a long way. It's to die for. Real Stroopwafel. Sticky stacks of golden therapy deliciousness! Originated in a city called Gouda in the Netherlands in the 1800s, Stroopwafels have been dubbed some of the world's best cookies. And for good reason. They consist of two crisp wafers with a thin layer of caramel-like syrup made of brown sugar, molasses, and butter in the middle. They are impressively crunchy and the perfect balance between sweet and crispy. These iconic little cookies are meant to be eaten with either tea or coffee, and there's a very specific way to eat them. You put Put it on top of your mug and let the steam warm and soften the cookie. This will make it as gooey as possible, releasing the best possible flavor. Have you all decided? Madam. We must have waffles. Authentic Stroop waffles can be a little hard to find in the U.S., but still doable with a little research. Those other waffle-like cookies have nothing on the real deal. Hot Pot. Hello, Hot Pot. What's more fun than dipping stuff in a hot broth surrounded by your friends and family? Luckily for us, this is exactly what Hot Pot is for. Once referred to as China's fondue, Hot Pot goes back over 2,000 years and has become a true cultural experience. The concept is simple, really. All you need to do is dip your thinly sliced meats, vegetables, seafood, noodles, basically whatever you feel like eating, in a pot of boiling broth that's usually seasoned with spices, scallions, and ginger, and ta-da! Not only is Hot Pot a tasty culinary experience, but it's also a great way to socialize and spend time with your loved ones. Nowadays, it's pretty easy to come across a Hot Pot restaurant no matter where you live. Mm. This is good. So you should take the opportunity and give the Hot Pot a go. Ceviche. <clears throat> this ceviche, it's... Want to take your hot day by the ocean to the next level? There's nothing like a fresh, refreshing plate of ceviche. This dish is made with raw seafood as its main ingredient. From shrimp and conch to lobster and salmon, it's the perfect way to enjoy all the beauty the sea has to offer. It's generally mixed in with lemon and lime juice, chopped onions, tomatoes, and a little bit of cilantro, depending on where you get it from. It likely originated in Peru, but some sources say Ecuador is the rightful inventor of this delicious meal. Mind if I have some of your tasty beverage to wash this down? No matter where it's from, ceviche is worth traveling a bit to get the freshest one you can get. Sure, you can always follow a recipe at home, but there's just something about knowing the fish you're eating is so fresh it was caught right before it was served to you. That can't be matched. Miracle Berry. Miracle. It's really a sort of a miracle. 
If there's one thing you should try doing before it's too late, it's gotta be to try and change the flavor of the foods you already know. But how do you do that, you ask? It's very simple. All you need is the mysterious Miracle Berry fruit, and your taste buds will have no idea what hit them. The Miracle Berry tablets are made with a substance called miraculin, which, when taken, attaches itself to the sour and bitter taste receptors on your tongue. That way, even the bitterest foods will taste sweet without adding any sugar. It works for pickles, lemons, vinegar, any tart foods you can think of. <laughs> It tastes like a foot! Miraculin was initially supposed to be used to make low-sugar foods, but it was later labeled as a food additive by the FDA. To taste trip, you can buy Miracle Berry tablets online and see your favorite foods in a whole new light. Kimchi. How good is that? Oh, wow. If you've ever been to a Korean restaurant, then chances are you've had the pleasure of trying kimchi. If you haven't, then what in the world are you waiting for? Made from fermented vegetables, typically cabbage and radish, kimchi is a must at every Korean dinner, lunch, and even breakfast table. Don't feel intimidated because of the fact it's fermented. That's what gives it its distinctive taste and all of its probiotic properties. Kimchi was actually created as a way to make perishable vegetables last longer and make them healthier. It can be served as a side dish, meaning it will be heavily seasoned with chili pepper, ginger, and onions, or as a meal itself with rice or noodles. With some patience and the right ingredients, you can even make your own jar of delicious fermented vegetables. It's practically impossible to pass up kimchi once you've had it once. So beware of your soon-to-be new addiction. Just took it to my veins! Paella. My husband's had some spicy food. Can I get some milk? <laughs> I heard no things worse. When you hear paella, it's like the bells for Spanish cuisine start ringing uncontrollably. It's one of the most famous Spanish dishes and one of the most beloved as well. Paella, named after the pan it's cooked in and not what's inside, is comforting, sort of easy to make, and oh, so tasty. The pan-cooked dish was first created in Valencia as a laborer's meal and was made with rice from the fields and all the scraps they could find, like tomato potatoes and onions, all cooked over an open fire. What? Were you saying something? Look, I don't speak Spanish. However, the recipe eventually spread across the country, and today it can be made with just about anything. Chicken, meat, seafood, whatever you want to make it with, your paella is going to be amazing. Bomba rice is usually used since it absorbs liquid well and stays firm while cooking, but any kind will do just fine. Balut. You've got the body in there. There's a body in there. I can't believe Butha wants me to eat an unborn baby duck. Considered a delicacy in the Philippines, balut is a hard-boiled duck egg that's eaten from the shell. So far, nothing too weird, but the touchy part comes from the partially formed embryo that welcomes you when you crack it open. So yes, that does mean that your snack will contain everything from the eyes, the feathers, and the beak, but the taste is supposed to be phenomenal. As popular street food, it can be found on almost every corner, usually served with salt or vinegar as sea Seasoning. If testing your limits doesn't scare you and you want to live the full Filipino experience, Balut is the perfect food for you to try. It actually tastes better than it looks. Civet coffee. Mmm, so good. Let me show you why. Let's talk about something almost everybody loves, coffee. You don't need an excuse to drink coffee, usually, but with this particular brew, a little convincing might be in order. Kopi Luwak, also known as Civet Coffee, is an exotic coffee that packs a lot of flavor and earns its expensive price tag due to its harvesting methods. What's so special about Civet Coffee? It's actually made from coffee cherries that have been digested and, well, pooped out by civet cats, a small mammal native to tropical Asia and Africa. I've had, I can't tell you how many cups of coffee in my life, and this, this is one of the best. The beans are washed, roasted, ground, brewed, and turned into a very fancy high-end coffee. You'll probably pay between $100 to $500 for a pound of the stuff, but if you're an avid coffee drinker and you're not afraid to pay up, Civet Coffee is definitely worth it. Just try to get past the fact that it was once inside a wild animal, and you should be okay.
We've got more. Just tap or click for another great video, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell. And hey, leave us a comment.